So wow, welcome to another episode of ResX, an indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. My name is Cadmus Delorme. How Kodas, my name is Erin Goodpipe, and on today's show, we have the Red Ride Tour, the First Nations University of Canada Winter Fest, Ryan McMahon, comedian. I will then sit down with two producers of a movie about a residential school. Stay tuned, folks. We have lots coming up for you. Let's get started. Our first story is on the Red Ride Tour, which stopped in Regina, and Res X was there. <laughs> Cecilia Sinclair and we are at the Artful Dodger in Regina and Red Bright Tours come to town with snake oil salesman myself and Dirk Miller. Uh, Red Bright Tours started five years ago and uh, I got a little bit of money. I got a tour grant and I was just trying to figure out what I could do with, you know, it was my first CD and nobody really knew about me. So I talked Chris Dirksen into uh, joining me on tour in my little red hatchback, and we named the tour Red Ride Tour. Then from there, it's just been people kind of um, organizing shows for us and inviting us out to their communities, their cities, and you know, it's just kind of grown bigger and bigger. That looked like quite the eventful evening at the Artful Dodger, guys. So great to see all of our Aboriginal artists from across the country and our local Indigenous folk come out and support the arts. Good on you, Artful Dodger. Our next story is the First Nations University of Canada Winterfest. Let's check out and see who won the neck bone eating contest. the end of another semester and we're going to be having uh, final papers due and exams are coming up and it could be a stressful time of year for us so we wanted to provide an opportunity for students to, to engage in some um, fun activities and to engage with each other and uh, bring everybody together for um, some some good uh, cultural and not so cultural fun the most popular uh, uh, events that we have at, at our winter fest um, are always um, our tug of war, our touch football, and our neck bone eating contest. Those seem to bring uh, the most people in and where they have the most fun also. Well, every year I usually enter the back push contest and I thought I was pretty good last year because I won first, but this year I didn't even place. So they got some tough, tough newbies coming up in this competition. So if you guys want to get in on that back push, you better be working on your squats. I was last place last year, first place this year. Though. Uh, it's nice. Uh, it's, I was just more into it just for the fun. So it's it's great to have fun with all the students. So I'm glad I won on behalf of Student Success Services. But same token, it's just for me, it's more about just being hanging out with the students and having some fun. Always a blast. It's a great way to blow off steam right before finals and then, um, right after midterm. So it's a great way to be uh, with your fellow students. FNUC Winterfest. Put it in your calendar, March, every year. As a student, I look forward to the Winterfest. We always started off with some football, getting into the neck bone eating contest. Best lunch of the whole semester. I never came in first, always came in second, third, and so on. I, I left a little bit too much meat. Couldn't get my tongue in between those bones. I gotta learn a little more. I, joined the win I also joined the jigging contest. From what I little know, you can tell that I never won from those moves right there. Always second. Like they say, always the best man, never the groom. That's my relationship with the Winterfest. But I went back every year because that was something that I like to challenge myself on. ResX TV caught up with Ryan McMahon about his Indian and cowboy network. Check it out. We should have known we were in trouble too, man, because my grandmother wasn't a traditional woman. She went to residential school. I wasn't raised with language and culture and ceremony. The only time she would smudge was when we were in trouble. She'd light all four medicines in a bowl for herself, just smudge herself down all angrily, swearing over those medicines, you know? Just praying that she wouldn't kill us, you know? 
got home down that dusty road, we go through the ditch, you know, go walking through the ditch, come up onto her grass. We could, we could just smell that sweet grass in there. Fucking, <laughs> bro, do you smell sweet grass? To this day, I go to ceremonies, I smell that smudge, I pull my pants down crying. <laughs> Don't go to a sweat with me, I get, I get buck naked. Indian and Cowboy is um, it's a digital media project, um, something that I started uh, this past October. Uh, the website is indianandcowboy.com. It's essentially a podcast network um, right now. It, it'll grow from, uh, from that, um, and it is, it is actively growing from that. We launched as a pod, uh, podcast network with six, uh, six podcasts, um, six different distinct uh, shows. Uh, by the end of this year, uh, we'll have 12 shows, so we'll be uh, twice as big as we uh, were when we started. Um, but uh, Indian and Cowboy is essentially, again, it's a, it's a gathering place, it's a meeting place uh, to uh, create a space for digital content, uh, a place for storytelling, a place for uh, pushing back against the mainstream. We exist because APTN exists. We exist because CBC exists. Uh, our stories can't be told in those formats, in those ways. Um, it, it's not as flexible, it's not as uh, dynamic. The internet is the Wild West, and that's why we used Indian and Cowboy, is that it's the new Wild West now. We're on the internet, we're making up the rules as we go. We're flexible. Um, we, we, tr we travel, we, we get invited places, um, and it's all in an effort to uh, teach people who we are. It's an effort to uh, rewrite history. It's an effort to um, give my daughters and, and the generation coming up behind me a chance to hear about uh, the truth, uh, a chance to reflect who we are today um, without putting on loincloths and sitting on the backs of horses. Um, though that's what we do sometimes, um, but uh, it's, it's a really a chance to uh, tell the world who we are. We have over 70,000 unique visitors uh, to our website just since October. We're operating on no budget and uh, we're just getting started. So um, Indian and Cowboy is an exciting uh, a project that uh, hopefully people hear a lot about uh, in the future. Uh, to see more of Ryan's podcast network, check out his site online, right here. Later on the show, we will have a music performance by the Red Ride Tour. Don't ditch, we'll be right back. With me today is Brenda Condra of the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. The Duke of Edinburgh's award program is a self-development program for young adults aged 14 to 24 years old. The participants have to do a number of components. They have to do service to the community, some physical rec activities. They pick a skill that they'd like to get better at and an adventurous journey. Our Community Youth Challenge project, we have targeted our northern Aboriginal and remote isolated communities so that we can bring the program to those in the northern part of our province. Brenda, on behalf of the Access Children's Fund, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to now present you this check for $10,000. Thank you very much. So on behalf of the board, the staff, and the participants, we really want to thank you. Indian Nation, a proud legacy, a reminder of all that is old. Indian Nation, keeper of a great... Rise Above Amnesia, inspired by the Regina Indian Industrial School, a documentary clip on this week's feature. Check it out. My uh, grandpa Joe had siblings that attended the Regina Industrial School. He had at least uh, one brother and at least one sister. There could have been others. Um, and again, until we know more about who all went to the school, um, 
that's still to be determined. Um, one of one of his siblings, a sister, uh, did not return home to Mr. Wasses. Uh, when school finished one year, they were waiting for the sons and daughters to return home. One daughter did not return home. Uh, they inquired with the Indian agent, where's our daughter? Um, the Indian agent made inquiries and um, replied to them that she died at school without further explaining the circumstance. Um, so um, that grand aunt is likely buried at the cemetery at the site of Regina Industrial School. Outside, just a little man with the world in the palm of my hand a little kid living life with innocence i remember everything with images a red truck and a man in a black robe they told my mom call him father joe so we called him father joe i saw a tear in my mother's eye i let out a cry but i didn't know why piled up in the back of a truck it had a flatbed on it and the road was rough my hands were shaking, feeling sick to my stomach. Where are they taking us? Who could have done it? My body is nervous. Why am I leaving? What is the purpose? What is the reason? Now I'm just the last little kid looking for my mother in this life that I live. All alone on the road that I'm traveling. And all I really want to do is just go home. I remember walking through the doors of the school. It was cool in September. They gave us clothes, put numbers on us. When it said, this will be your name till you're home in December. They put powder on my head. Threw me in the shower, then lined us up for bed. They took my braid away. They took my braids away. When I see you taken away, my heart becomes displaced. We've broken shadows, no time for fame. I'll never see you again. I know I'll never see you again. See you again. Cold night, feeling shackled in my bed. I remember hearing whimpers from the kids, whispers across the room, talking things like, I hope we go home soon. And this is just the first night in my life. I think this is my worst night. I'm just a kid in the test of my will. When we'd hear the jingle of the keys, we'd all lie still. I close my eyes just to block of where I'm living with an image on a cloud that I'm sitting. I want to fly away. I want to fly away, I can't cry, I can't sleep, they even took away your kid for trying to speak, I remember thinking that we never get to meet, then my mind drifted off and fell asleep, my first morning brought food, I couldn't eat it, if we didn't we get punished in a seat, this is the life that I had to live in residential school as a kid, now it's 60 years later looking back, kind of funny how my mom remembers that, all the little things that I can't forget, but I'm thankful that I made it every step, and through the years confronted so many fears my feelings have been adjusted i'm telling it to your ears the elements of my tears the sentiments of the years that i spent with my peers when i remember I see you taken away my heart becomes displaced with broken shadows no time for fame i'll never see In studio, ResX would like to welcome Janine Windolf from the Waswanapi Nation, but has your roots to La Ronge, mm -hmm. and also Trudy Stewart, who is from the Flying Dust First Nation. Welcome. Uh, we're here sitting here today talking about uh, Rise from Amnesia. So mm -hmm. please, starting with Janine, tell us what Rise from Amnesia means and is. Uh, Rise from Amnesia is a story that follows the journey of the uncovering of the Regina Indian Industrial School. So that's what rises is the Regina Indian Industrial School. And so what we did is we uh, 
been working on this project for over a year now, and we've been talking to all the different kind of educators, descendants, church groups, and First Nations working groups have all been involved in kind of raising awareness on the site on Pinky Road, and so the documentary really goes through their journeys and our own personal journey on the film. Great. Trudy, uh, what has this um, video or film um, mean to you today after being involved with it for over a year? Um, it's really been quite a journey for the team, but uh, not just for the team, for our storytellers as well. Um, there are some people that we interviewed, you know, early on in the project uh, last summer that we revisited in the fall, um, and even in recent months, and uh, saw just how far they had gone in their journey as well. Because it's not just uh, digesting the information you're uncovering; it's um, you know, building a connection to it and to the people, even though they're long gone. For sure, thank you. Uh, Janine, you spoke of Pinky Road. Um, the uh, Regina Indian Industrial School um, was situated around the area. To this day, when you drive down Pinky Road, you can still see it. What is uh, moving forward with that area? What is, what is the works for that area? Uh, well, it's been, it started off with kind of a muni municipal committee, and what they were doing is they wanted to bring awareness that the site's there. They wanted to bring it to the attention of the city and to of the province. And so from there, they kind of started gathering people, gathering descendants, and uh, kind of a church working group began. And they started doing their own research that they could share with descendants. And so last year, they brought together all the descendants from the 43 communities that were impacted. And those who came were shared about the history. They were given a list to show who attended the school. Mm -hmm. And out of that, the First Nations Working Group developed. And so the First Nations Working Group have been kind of spearheading the next actions that move forward. And their first action was to start the RISE Commemoration Association in corporate. So it's a nonprofit that's going to start fundraising, start kind of starting the initiatives to getting the land secured. And from there, creating a commemoration stone so that the history can be, I guess, uh, memorialized? For sure, and protected. And protected, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, Trudy, the, recently the TRC um, released um, a statement. Um, how does this film reflect the TRC, uh, the Truth and Reconciliation? Um, <clears throat> uh, one of our storytellers, uh, David McLennan, he uh, was a former member on the uh, Municipal Heritage Advisory Committee. And he had actually called the TRC when the news was brought to him about the cemetery. And this was about 2012 mm -hmm. when it was just being rediscovered. And the TRC came out and their archaeologists looked at it and, uh, and they had said that it was a, a site of national significance and that they had never seen anything like it, especially uh, so close to an urban center. For sure. Well, you know, on behalf of ResX, you know, thank you for taking the time to coming to sit down with us. And the film has been played, and you can watch it again. If you want to just tell us if there's a website quickly or something that they uh, can go yeah. to. Yeah, www.risemediaproject.com. And we'll be actually putting the documentary on there on June 21st, so it'll be available to anyone who wants to see it. On Aboriginal Day. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Such a serious issue, but an amazing documentary. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, Rider fans, I'm Rod Peterson. Join me and a panel of Rider experts each week for In the Huddle, Saskatchewan's only primetime television show on Canada's team. Join me and my panel of Rider experts for all the latest on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Brought to you by Bennett Dunlop Ford. For the best online dealership experience, it's honestly better at BennettDunlopFord.com. In the Huddle, Tuesdays at 7, only on Access 7. Hi, my name is Bob Friedrich. I'm the host of Cruising on 7. We take you all over Saskatchewan and show you some of the coolest of rides and some of the best car shows around. Watch Cruising on 7 on Thursdays at 7, only on Access 7. Well, Cadmus, looks like we had a wide range of things this show. Yes, FNUC Winterfest. 
That neck bone eating contest, damn. If you were in it, your bones would look like ivory. Like what this. you trying to say? Oh, well, you know, you know that you'd probably take out your teeth and bust them up a little bit, pop it back in. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ryan McMahon. Yeah, lots of laughs. Tons of laughs. He's a great guy. Make sure you guys check out his site. Go to his site. Lots of information. <sighs> and that rise from amnesia. Yes. <sighs> Very empowering. A lot of um, a lot of challenges to overcome. But you know, when you talk about issues like that, there is a lot of opportunities going forward. We're beginning to heal as a people. And finally, the music. The Red Ride Tour, guys. Make sure you check that out on our segment right now. And like they say, party on, Garth. Party on, Cadmus. <laughs> Res X. Celine Sinclair and we are at the Artful Dodger in Regina and Red Bright Tours come to town with snake oil salesman myself and Dirk Miller. Uh, Red Bright Tours started five years ago and uh, I got a little bit of money. I got a tour grant and I was just trying to figure out what I could do with, you know, it was my first CD and nobody really knew about me. So I talked Chris Dirksen into uh, joining me on tour in my little red hatchback. And we named the tour Red Ride Tour. Then from there, it's just been people kind of um, organizing shows for us and inviting us out to their communities, their cities, and you know, it's just kind of grown bigger and bigger. the pipe ceremonies um, to pray to our ancestors and pray to the Creator. And the feast acknowledges the spirits that help bring up our prayers up to the Creator. Um, and we ask them to come and eat with us. And then right after the feast, we begin the round. What we do throughout the entire year is that we teach uh, students, faculty, and staff here at the University of Regina our culture, our ways, our protocols, our outlook, our worldviews, our, our total spirituality. There's only a few festivals in Canada that have um, have the kind of history that uh, Segewawak has. So you know, to be invited uh, back year after year uh, to a festival that has the history that Segewiwak does um, is, a, is, a, is a complete honor. Mm -hmm. 